In today's episode, I talk with Coach Tony of the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma men's soccer team. If you like our interviews, I would truly appreciate it if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you're more of a podcast person, check us out on Amazon, Google, Spotify, and more, and leave us a review and subscribe there. And don't forget to follow us on all the various social media channels at discover underscore CS. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Tony Orsi. How are you, Coach? I'm good. How are you, Matt? I'm doing well, thanks. So, Coach, you are at the University of the Science and Arts of Oklahoma. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Chicken Bay, Oklahoma. All right. Well, it's a, it's a, a long name forever. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want to have to put that, you know, across the back of a jersey or anything like no, that. No, we, uh, we go Drovers. That's our, that's our mascot. The so drovers. USAO or Drovers. USAO. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the time today. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit uh, about recruiting and, and getting the team together. You guys are NAIA out there in Oklahoma. Um, when do you really start talking to players and, and kind of building out those those classes of on the recruiting side? I'd probably say it depends on if they're uh, American or international. If, if they're Americans, it's usually sophomore year. We try to get them down on a visit um, just to kind of, you know, start the dialogue, start the process. And then I'd probably say junior year, beginning of senior year is when we probably start to offer. Um, and now we've, we've done it later in the past, obviously, if a guy is you know, kind of a diamond in the rough somewhere that's late or, um, you know, maybe a freshman that's just, you know, we know through the club system that's just unbelievable. But I'd, I'd probably say sophomore years when we start um, actively recruiting and then probably junior years when we start to offer. Um, it's starting to get earlier and earlier now, um, which is which is good. You know, obviously we're not crazy and in going into the middle school. I mean, that stuff is, is a bit, you know, a bit too much. But usually by senior year, they're starting to get uh, their looks everywhere. I know NCA is a little bit different. They, they have to go a little bit earlier. But I'd probably say by the middle of their junior year, um, if we are interested and they're interested, they've probably received um, some type of offer to, to, to commit or, or not to commit. And then internationals is, is usually um, a year before they come out because they kind of, their, their school system's a little bit different. They have to finish graduating in June before they come over here uh, with, with the NAI Clearinghouse they have now. So it's, it's really hard for them to, to kind of know because they don't have their grades or they don't have their final exams. So really we'll get them for uh, probably starting August or September of this year, we start to get videos for guys coming next year. So internationals is probably a year um, a year before they come out, which is a little bit later from the from the club aspect, uh, just because some guys are trying to sign a pro contract, some guys are trying to play back home, some guys have just decided they want to come over to the to, to the U.S. for a degree. So I'd say they're a little bit later um, than they are the 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 American homegrown kids here because the system is so different. They don't have recruiting visits. Some of them don't even know about playing in the states until they're 16, 17, and then they start to look. So, I mean, looking at your roster, it looks like you, you got a, a heavy contingent of internationals yes. over there. So, yes. so how are you guys uh, recruiting, evaluating, and, and deciding who, who kind of gets the, the nod? Really, we get – we uh, it started a long time ago. I mean, this, this kind of dates us. I've, I've been here since 2007, I think, and we didn't have all the fans. I mean, we would not have been on a Zoom call, as you know. <laughs> well, we would have been talking on, a, on my land phone. Um, so the, the first couple of years, we kind of just really casted a wide net of email, 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 find everybody we can, you know, that it was still pretty new. Um, and then now we've built kind of relationships with, with agencies and with handlers and with guys that, you know, think we have treated their, their client or student athlete well. And now they'll, they'll reach out to us sometimes as much as we reach out to them where it's, you know, Hey coach, hope all's well, what are you looking for for 23? We'll say, hey, we need to, you know, a right back is goalkeeper for, you know, and then they start, hey, we think we got the guys. They know the system now. They know the grades. They know, you know, test-wise what they need to get. Uh, so now it's more of a narrow um, a narrow field instead of just, you know, casting that wide net. And then really it's just, um, you know, it's like anything else. We, we get a good video. We'll get a good game film on them, and then we'll speak with them. And, and the biggest thing now is getting to – they can't obviously come over here on a recruiting visit from – 
you know, the Netherlands or Germany or Brazil or Spain, but we can have a conversation like this where I can kind of look at them and see, you know, get a little bit about them, what kind of person they are, because that's a big piece for us too is, um, you know, it doesn't matter how good of a player you are if you're not going to fit our our system and our culture of doing things right. And then it's just we go on talent. Like, like, like anything else, you know, we'll watch – I don't know how many videos a day we get, you know, once, once we, you know, Hey, here's what we need. You know, we'll get 20, 30 a day. And we're just kind of, here's to the top three, here are some guys we think that could be on the reserve. And then we start contact from there, but you know, it's not a first come first serve. It's not a, well, this guy email us first, you know, in the college game is, can you get the best available player and best available talent to fit, to, to fit your system? So um, it's gotten a little bit easier um, as far as now people reaching out to us and, and now with email and all that stuff, now the players can send us stuff themselves. So they're kind of working on their own. So the, the first couple of years, it was a little chaos, just, you know, copy paste e- sure. 400 emails to everybody I could overseas. And then, uh, now it's more of a relationship where I'll have a, you know, a call like this with an agency of, you know, we're looking for this kid, this kid, this kid, here's what we need. Yeah, do you have anybody? And and like I said, we have a good enough relationship now where they kind of know our team of being a good side and and doing things right. And they're going to go to class. And you know, we've had a couple guys that say, "Coach, this kid can play, but he's not going to last with you guys. He's just not. He, he, he'll, he'll he'll you know, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And that's a big thing too. Is we we want great people here as well as great players, if that makes sense. Ah, absolutely. Well, and, and on the domestic side of things, I know you and, and I think Coach Hampton are part uh, of a club program as well. So where, yeah. when, you're, when you're looking at the domestic kids, you know, what are some of your kind of can't-miss events and, and tournaments and things that you go to to make sure you're, you're getting out and seeing players? Really, uh, the, the, uh, the Oklahoma Energy is the, is the youth club we coach at. We have started a showcase. Um, we really like the um, uh, FC Dallas runs a, a showcase um, in, in March that's very, very good. And, um, you know, there's a lot of there's, – there's an Arlington showcase in December. Uh, there's an Adidas showcase in Tulsa. So that's kind of the, uh, the big ones that we hit. Um, but to, to, to be honest, we're, we're out there so much, we may just be walking by a field. Yeah. I mean, there's there's times where I, I have a game and you know, and, and 30 minutes away, and I finish my game and I'm packing up and I'm leaving, and you know, there's an under 16 game starting, and I'm, I watch the first five minutes ago. Who's that? Who's that kid? And, you know, and I'll find them on Got Soccer or their website, and I'll email the coach. Uh, but you know, those are really the big ones that we hit when you know we go to a couple you know out of state ones, but really, you know, we're we're more we want to get the more Oklahoma based kids if we can. I just, as far as if you're going to get a, a domestic kid, the parents want them close to home. They want to be able to attend the game. So, you know, us being out in Las Vegas probably isn't going to do as much as, you know, uh, being at a local one here. And, and there's talent here mm-hmm. as well. Um, so we, we tend to spend more local on those domestic kids. Just it's, it's, it's kind of hard now. It was very hard during the COVID years of, you know, there's a kid from Delaware that's really interested. How how can he get here? You know, we've got our we, – you can't come here on a weekend. You can't come here on a Monday or Tuesday. They're missing class and all that. And, you know, they come to our residential camps. But by that time, we may have already signed three players or they have gotten five other offers. So I, I'd say the, the, the Dallas, the Oklahoma, and the Tulsa are really the three ones that we hit as far as local that are really, really good tournaments. Well, you, you mentioned camp, so – it sounds like you have your own, you know, how does that yes. work? Do you guys work other schools camps? How, how big a part of the recruiting process is camp? We, we tend to sometimes work other, other schools camps. Uh, the main thing with our season with doing club is, is the time to do that. So we really, you know, a couple of our assistants are undergraduates or maybe some of our players will do some, some camps over the summer or help out with another school's camp. We're not anti that. We just, that might be the three days we have off where we actually get to see our, our wife and our family and we're, we're not doing that one. But yeah, our camp, um, we run it in July, usually right after regionals. Um, you know, we, tryouts are usually May and June here. Regionals are usually mid-June, so it's real hard to get a good camp with people being gone, people being out, people at regionals. So we really do that first maybe second week of July is when we have our, our camp. And we really run two. We have a residential camp, which is 
more geared for under nine to under 15, 16 boys, girls, all levels. And then we also have a college ID camp that we run simultaneously. Those are the 16, 17, 18 high school age boys. So, you know, we're not running a camp where there's uh, a team of, of 11 year olds and a college guy wanting to come here. We think neither one will really benefit or enjoy that camp because while camp is fun, they also want to get a little taste of what it's like here and want to get better. So we want to put them with, with likability. Uh, but we do have a college ID camp where we, we send out invites. Um, I think we had about 65 men last year, which is very good, about 50 women. And our residential camps that we max out our dorms every year. So I think we've got 250, 260 coming to those camps, which it's a great it's a great event. The, the kids are, you know, the, the, the camp is staffed by all almost 90% college coaches. Um, and then the college ID camp is ran by us. But we also sometimes bring in guys from other schools in our conference just because we don't want it to be so inclusive that oh they're just coming you know all these kids are coming for usao so what will happen is we we had a a, a division two coach come we had a division coach one coach locally come speak uh we had a couple coaches even within our conference come speak um kind of on a college night for these players just so they can kind of get a hint of you know we want everybody to come here that that's obviously our goal but we also want to educate these kids on how the process works. That's the biggest part of a college ID camp is, hey, look at our look at our field, look at our facilities. That's, you know, we don't want to be used car salesmen, but we also want them to know, here's what other schools do, here's what other schools offer. So, you know, we, we really want to value, especially the younger kids, we want them to understand the process and not just commit somewhere without really knowing what's going on, if that makes sense. So oh, um, we, we, our, our camp is, we, the, the players love it. The, the, the college ID kids love it. Um, and then our last usually recruiting tool is our reserve team. We'll usually get our under 18 boys teams up for a game um, where we can kind of see them and maybe get them on a visit afterwards, but they're playing our reserve men. So we get to see them, you know, maybe train with us and then we get to see them live in an 11 v 11 game because we can't attend every showcase. We just, you know, we don't have the time or the budget to to be going to Indiana and Georgia and Florida every every week because we're in season right now. Yeah, for sure. Well, in terms of, um, you know, the 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 dollars and cents of it all, because that's what a lot of parents are uh, right. uh, concerned about. So I'm not going to hold you any hard numbers here, but kind of just give me a, a ballpark overview of what the scholarship and financial aid situation is on an, for an average incoming player, whether that's academic money, athletic money, or any other oh. school scholarships. What, what, what should a student athlete expect if they were coming to your school? Well, our school uh, without any aid is 16,000. Oh, so wow. we're actually pretty cheap right off the bat. Um, and then there's some, it's a, it's a, it's a tough school here. It, you know, these, the, the arts, the, the science, arts, business, um, it's a very, very good school. So the academic scholarships are, you know, you can get anywhere from everything paid for, um, to five, 6,000 coming out of your bill right away. And then, you know, ours are usually, you know, 3.5 or above. 26 ACT or above. So we do hold a high standard to that because it is a prestigious school. Um, so, I, you know, our school right off the bat is pretty cheap. And then with a, with an academic scholarship, they can be paying under 10 without doing a thing right off the bat. Um, and then, you know, we, as far as scholarship wise, they kind of redid ours to where we don't give full rides, but we give everything but meals. Um, but what they did is they took the meal scholarships from us and moved it to other avenues to where it actually helps us. So a kid on a full ride is probably paying about $2,800 a year, okay. which still, um, you know, is, is still very, very cheap. Obviously it's not, you're, you're not getting everything, but you're getting pretty close. So that's a big piece of being a public university is you're getting a great education and it's, uh, it's already off the bat, um, uh, fairly inexpensive for, for, for these kids to come here. Um, and then, you know, athletically, it's just based on, you know, their their talent level and what they can do and if they can help. And then academically, it's in the in the classroom because that's that's, you know, going back to our camp on our college night. That's a big thing we we earn is you need to be outside every day on your own if you really want to be elite, not just in our training sessions at the club or high school. Same thing in the classroom, because um, yeah. that's a big that's a lot of people don't understand that is 
you know, if you do well, you're getting a good chunk of academic right off the bat. And then, you know, we can sprinkle a little bit of athletic scholarship in there and, and you're going to school for, you know, five five thousand dollars as opposed to your grades aren't good. Now you're paying, you know, twelve. So you're you're trying to save save a little bit of money there. So but we are allowed to stack athletic and academically. Um, but the academic scholarships are tough just just because our school is, you know, um, I think you know, 20, 27 ACTs minimum of, of getting any academic money, which is great. I, I like that because um, we're, we're not just, you know, our enrollment is probably around 900, hmm. but we've got students and we've got student athletes. We don't have guys coming in that are, we know are going to fail. And, you know, if, if we lowered everything and, hey, you need a 16 ACT and a 1.8, yeah, let's sneak them in. And by Christmas time, he's struggling and he's gone and we've wasted all these resources and our schools wasted all these resources and the kid had a bad experience and now he's left almost in a worse spot because his grades are bad and it's hard to make that back up. So that that's a big piece, I think, is um, we get the right players and the right kids that we know are going to have success. So when they get here, we don't have to worry about them because we've seen their body of work for three, four years in the, in the classroom. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the, about the school. Uh, you mentioned the kind of the academic rigors. So, I mean, you you, you, you've been there for, for a number of years, so help us out with some of the awesome things that uh, about the school that maybe I'm not gonna learn just by clicking around the website. I think our, the, the diversity of this place is, 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 is awesome. It's, it's so different than every other place I've been to. I mean, every school, if you look on the website, has internationals. But ours is, I mean, you know, you can sit down for a, a team meal and you're sitting with a guy from France, Ghana, Spain, Algeria, and we've got one from Moore, Oklahoma. And they're in a group just, and they're talking about anything but football, anything but soccer. And, and that's a great piece to kind of learn about other people's, you know, cultures and differences and, and similarities. And that that's a good, uh, a, a great thing for us. It's just, it's kind of a melting pot here. And, and you look at all around baseball, softball, basketball, um, it's, it's the same. There's guys from and girls from everywhere, which is just really, really cool. It's, it's just an experience. It's hard to explain. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning every day about what's going on in the world sometimes just by driving our men to a game, you, you know, of, hey, hey, I saw what was happening in, in Kenya, you know, what, what, what's going on? And they're like, well, this and this, this happened. And, you know, this, this, this company's buying this and here's what's going on. And, um, that stuff's just really cool. And that, that's hard to really put on a pamphlet. You know what sure. I mean? Of, yeah. of learning about cultures and, and just getting everybody's diversity is, is fantastic. Um, and then I think the, um, another thing is we've probably got 40, we have a reserve side, so we have 40 men's players. So when I'm talking to a parent in a, uh, on a recruiting call and they're like, is my son gonna be taken care of? And I said, well, we wanna try to leave them better people than when they got here. We want, you know, you guys did a great job of raising your son. Now we want to try to add some things and make, you know, make them become a good man. And are they being looked after? Yeah, you've got two coaches that, again, we're going to be hard on you. We're going to coach you up. It's not always going to be easy. But as soon as we step off those lines, we're here to do anything in the world for those young men. And they've got 39 other brothers right off the bat. As soon as they set foot on campus, if we have 40 players, they've got 39 guys looking after them. And, um that's just a different it's it's, it's more of a family feel um because when a lot of players play college the biggest regret they say is i miss the family atmosphere of club i miss the camaraderie of high school even though the college level might be higher obviously because there's grown men in the talent they're missing that that family piece where they feel like they're playing for something bigger than just themselves and i think that's that's what we have here um, you know, I, I, perfect example yesterday, um, we finished training and I needed some stuff. I, I, we, we have a team leaders group that I can text out. I texted my team leaders and said, Hey, can five of you come by and need some help? 22 kids showed up. You know what I mean? Just in, and these are 18, 19 year old kids that probably want to be doing anything else, but they just, I was like, everybody can though. Yeah. You needed help. We didn't know we're, we're here. What, what do you need? And that's just a, that's tough to really explain until people get here. Um, of, of what a great, you know, the community supports us. 
Uh, the athletic program support us. I mean, we've got volleyball, basketball, baseball in the stands every game, razzing the other team, getting the level. You know what I mean? It's just, um, you know, playing in Chickasha, Oklahoma, which most people haven't heard of. It's 730 under the lights. It's an experience. And it's something that is 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 what keeps people coming back. Um, so, and, and then the last thing, I think our school has both academic and athletic excellence where there's some places maybe where the team's not very good, but the major is fantastic. And you have other places where the team's great, but they don't love the school. So they just go because the team's going to win some games and they end up not happy. We're here, I think you're getting tested. You know, we're competing for a Sooner Athletic Conference title every year. We're competing for a national title every year. And you're also getting a degree that can get you a job anywhere, hopefully in the country. So they kind of get hit with both to where, um, you know, they're here because everybody wants to play pro, but it's a 0.11% chance. So you're also getting a degree as well as playing for a, for a top school. So it's just, it's just a great place, kind of 40 minutes outside of the big city. So, so to speak, it's, you know, we, we like to say it's, we're kind of a little bit like the Gonzaga of basketball where we're not these the power five, you know, we're not, we're not in these massive cities, but what we have here is pretty special, um, which is why we've had some some success over 25 years, and we've had great players, great parents, uh, great kids, great coaches come through here. I mean, one of our ex assistant coaches is the USL Pro goalkeeper coach. Uh, we have another player here that is the female assistant coach of the Canadian national team on the women's side. Uh, we had a, a center back here that was the Gotham FC women's NPSL coach or NWSL coach. Um, we have a former player here that is the U.S. Deaf national team coach. So and we have one that's a brain surgeon on the, you know what I mean? So you just look at all these, all these people that have left and we just had, this is our 25th year. So we had a little banquet to celebrate coach Hampton on alumni day for everything he's done. I'm looking around all these people and I'm just, you know, I'm watching everybody that's played for us pass us. And that's kind of a, a badge of honor. Of what Look at all what all these people are doing coming out of our place. And it's not us. It's 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 the culture and everything that we've set. And, you know, we always say try to leave it better than when you got here. And when you look around this place, you know, I'm looking at everybody's resume and I'm like, good, good grief. I mean, you guys have – what you guys have done, and, and they still, you know, uh, still watch us. I mean, we've got guys from 98 in a group text. First year program, you know, tough, tough loss today, a great win. And, you know, the, 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 the coach that used to coach the Gotham FC women's team. I mean, he's coaching Kristen Press, I think. Uh, he texts us before big games. Still, I mean, you know, just, just, hey, good luck, man. You know, be, you know, always a drover. Let's go, let's go win this game. And that stuff you can't really explain until you're part of it, if that makes sense. So it's real hard to put that in a, you know, I can't send that in an attachment, in an email. You know, I can break down the numbers, but until you really see it, it's something that, uh, you know, it's hard to explain. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Well, let's shift gears, talk a little about on the field stuff with the team. I mean, you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, 40 guys with a reserve. Um, you know, what is it like for, you know, an incoming player? Is the reserves mostly freshmen? Is it, how, how does that work when deciding? Does everybody train together? Just kind of how does that whole reserve squad work? Usually during preseason, we have everybody together because um, every year is kind of a clean slate. So you started 10 games last year or you started zero games. You started on the reserve. We don't care. You, you had eight months to go get better. Let's go see. We didn't reach our ultimate goal. So positions are open. So it's, it's, it's training camp, it's preseason. And then once preseason hits, we start to kind of thin that list out and split the varsity and reserve. Usually by our second or third game, we kind of have a pretty good gauge of who's where. Um, and not to say we don't ever call anybody up and not to say we don't ever drop anybody. Uh, but we usually have a, a group of probably 22 will be on that first team. And then, you know, 18 to 20 will be on the reserves. So, uh, and that list is based on really what they're bringing at the moment. So, you know, when, when we score a goal, it's not USAO junior so-and-so, USAO freshman, it's, it's USAO drover. So we'll, we, we take the best player. I mean, that, that's really it. There's freshmen that come in right off the bat. And after three days we go, this, kid, this kid's gonna be special. 
Um, and then there's guys that maybe need a year or two. We can see something in them. The light hasn't come on yet. It's still a little fast. They're not used to the college game, and maybe they start on the reserves. Um, we've had players come off injuries, usually get a week in the reserves if they're a varsity, so it's a mix. Uh, we have some juniors that are on the reserve team. We have some freshmen that are on the reserve team. We have some juniors that start, and we have a couple freshmen this year that start on the varsity first team. So really, we, we don't look at the class. We look at what can they do to, to help. You know, you know, I know in high school sometimes, senior night, we start all the seniors, and it's great. But, but at the college game, we honor them before the game, and then we got to go win our game. Um, so really, it, it's based on what, what they can do. You know, we, we'll never not start an All-American. We'll never not play an all-conference player and go, well, you're a freshman. This guy's been here longer. Yeah, Coach, but we're, we're, we're two and six right now. So that's not what you – know, you know what I mean? So we, we want to do best by the team. Um, so it's really just a mix of, 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 of both. You know, we and we have some guys that play both. Some guys suit that varsity team, and then they play the Wednesday reserve game, so they're getting 90 minutes in. So it, it really will be based on on what they do. And we see a lot of players come in after year one and just make leaps and bounds and get a kid. I mean, we have um, a guy starting this year as a junior that played the first two years on the reserves. He was a good player. He just wasn't ready. And he kept at it. He kept working. He kept training. And he came in this preseason, and we went, wow. You know, as opposed to, well, he was on the reserves two years, so, you know, off you go again. And he, he doesn't get that valuable game time. So it really just it just depends on how quickly they pick up the game over here because it is so different from the international game. It's quick, it's fast, it's physical. No one has a lot of time on the ball. So it's just how quickly can they adapt to that. So, I mean, we've started eight freshmen before. We've started 10 seniors before. It's just it's just based on the individual player. Yeah. No, I what... I figured that was going to be the case, but you always yeah. got to double check. Uh, so you, we talked about the, the size of the team. Let's talk about the size of the staff uh, besides you and uh, Coach Hampton. Like, how big is the staff? What role does everybody play? And, and how did they fit into the day? We, we have about five, five on staff. So um, we, we, we still technically do both men's and women's programs. So we, we, Coach Hampton is the head coach of both. Um, and then you have myself who is technically the men's assistant and we have coach Niall Crick um, from Scotland, who is the technically the women's assistant. Um, and then we have coach Joey Shepard, who is, this is kind of his, he played for us. This is his second year. He kind of does both. And then we have kind of an undergraduate student assistant that, that just finished and he's graduating in December. So we really have a staff of five. Um, and then I'm usually running the men. Uh, Coach Crick will usually run the women's session, and Coach Hampton will be, you know, based on what's needed. Hey, today I, I got to go with the women, or the next two days I got to go with the men. But he's usually at both. Um, and then we have, you know, Coach Shepard and, and, and Coach Harry Donaldson, the, the undergraduate assistant, kind of there if needed. Um, so really we've got a staff of five. Um, and then we have, you know, Co Coach Harry Donaldson also runs the goalkeeping sessions. Uh, and then we have two athletic trainers. So that's really our that's really our staff. It's it's kind of a you know we're not just one guy, but we also don't have thirty guys out running around with with twenty five different opinions. We, we've got a group of five that we meet here. Here's what we're doing. Here's where we're going. Um, so our roles are usually you know with an NAI school we're usually doing everything, which we love. I mean you know if if I had, we we put our job description down it'd probably be three pages. It's <laughs> we 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 coach the games. Uh, we, we mow the field, we line the field, we fertilize the field, we drive the team, we organize the practices, we, we, we recruit, we get, you know, we order the gear, we, we do laundry, you know, we, we do all that to help our, our, our athletes out. But we like it because it, we take some pride in it. It's our field, you know, it's a player's field, you know, if we're out there spending three hours on it. We, you take a little more ownership than having just a staff in there of someone to do that. So I don't, I, I think I would struggle if I was at a, a, a place where everyone did that stuff for me, I, I think I'd get too, I just, I, I like to be a part of it. Um, you know, we're the guys where if a sprinkler head's leaking, we're not calling anybody. We'll just go, we'll go get a shovel. You know what I mean? Let's go, let's go fix it. And, and, and I think uh, it kind of teaches you to do everything. So, you know, now there, there's nothing that we really haven't seen or haven't had a problem run into that we can't 
fixed because we're we're kind of have our hands in everything. And you know, other people are like, oh my gosh, you have to do all that. I go, yeah, we love it. You know, we 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 I, I love doing it. You know, that that's my, you know, that's my getaway on game days. I mow the field. <laughs> you know, I want it to look fantastic for the for for our our men and our women that are playing on it. Um, and I take pride in it because it's a big part of our. You know, it's the first thing you see when you drive into campus. So that that's a recruiting tool for every sport. So when softball has a recruiting visit, that's the first thing that kid sees. So I want to make that thing look special, even though they're not a soccer player. And um, that's just kind of my my kind of zen moment, I guess you could say, on the mower of what happens if we go down a goal? What if we go down a man? What if we go up a goal late? You know, remember last year? What 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 you know? Were they were they good on the set pieces? Of, when I was watching the film, what did I notice? And that just gives me an hour to, you know, not only try to make the place look great, but I'm also, you know, it's, it's kind of my my pregame ritual to where if that was taken away from me, I probably wouldn't do a very good job. So, um, you know, we, we do a bit, as most schools do, you know, um, we, we mow, recruit, inventory, budget, fields, drive. We, 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 we do it all and we love to do it all because we want the best experience for these men and women players. No, it's fantastic. I I, I can relate. I was yeah. doing the same oh, thing Tw- twenty years ago. The D two coach mowing mowing the field yeah. the day, day of, and that exactly yeah. it. That's your that's your thinking time. I love yeah, it. and it's it, you know, and, and if if we do it, it, it kind of cult, you know, it it filters on down. I mean, you know, I, I think the, the a great story to sum up USAO is Coach Hampton um, mid September, I think, got his six hundredth win. He got a text from his wife while we were working on fertilizer. <laughs> we were about to fertilize an area and, and, and get a sprinkler head because we thought it looked a little dead in that spot on the field. So we actually got a text saying congratulations. He's like, oh, you know, yeah, big win. We'll take it. And I'm like, no, you're, you're 600th win. And he's like, oh, I had no idea. <laughs> and me and him are out there right after we just won a game. And, we're, you know, it's just yeah. – and, when, and when someone like that does that, it filters down to everybody on staff and the players. And now, you know, nobody is, is, is above anything or too good to anything. I mean, our, you know, our, we had a guy score the game winning goal the other day and we saw him go back out to make sure there was no trash. Just pick just little things like that. That just, it's just a culture of something where we're trying to produce great men and women. And when you see your head coach do that or your team captain do that, it just, it filters down to where these people are going to be successful now. Cause Right. It's just one of those where we're not just sitting on our desk with our feet up drinking coffee, texting people, hey, do this, do that, get that done while we sit in our ivory tower and hang out. I think, you know, that I I, I wouldn't do well in a situation, as I'm sure you're probably the same way in speaking to you. You wouldn't do well. You know, you're one of those. If it's going to be right, done right, I want to do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that, that's one, one of the reasons this website exists and these yeah. podcasts exist is because I've, I've people need need to hear these conversations and exactly. learn, learn who they're yeah. going to go see so well coach we, we've covered a lot of ground and and i always like to end these the same way and that's what didn't we talk about is there anything else you want to say whether it's about recruiting about the school about the team or anything else you want folks to know i'll, I'll give you the last word here uh, i i would just say to every person that's trying to go play don't just get caught in the letters of a uni- of a university don't just get caught in a win loss. Don't just get caught in what you know what the school looks like for everywhere. I, I'd say look at what's the best fit. That's probably what we tell every player that we try to recruit is we sure hope you come here and we sure hope you play for us. But we want to make sure it's the right decision because you get four years to kind of live your dream and I'll be here the next 30, God willing. So we try to make sure we tell them make sure it's a great fit for you and don't just look at I'm going to go play Division One, or I'm going to go play NCAA. I want to play D2, or I want to look at the NAI, look at the JUCO, look look, look at all these places because, gosh, there's a lot of talent out here that sometimes people don't notice because they get so caught up and, you know, I want to go play here, go play here, go play there, and they're they're overlooking some fantastic offers and opportunities because they're just so soul focused on what the letters are in the uh, in the name of the school or the name of the division they're playing in. I think that's a big piece of recruiting that people don't look at. Um, they always just look at, you know, well, uh, this big D1 school offered me 5K. Isn't that awesome? Yes, you're still paying 65. 
as, you know, as opposed to this school is in my backyard and they're offering me so much and they're competing for something. And, you know, that that's what we say is you can go anywhere. And, you know, if you go eight and 10 all four years, it doesn't matter where you go. Or you can go somewhere that may be a great fit for you. And, and maybe you're competing for a conference title or a national title. Um, and if you're good enough, you're good enough. For those guys that always think you got to play D1 to get to the next level, that's not not true, you know. And, and I'm not there. There, you know, D1 is fantastic. There's there's no way I'm going to say anything uh, negative about D1. I played Division Two as as well, NCAA Division Two. So um, I know the benefits of it, but I also know if you're good enough, you can get a look. Um, you know, we we've had some guys play USL Pro. Um, I think we had a women's NAIA player actually suit up for the national team. Yep. So I, I look if, if you're truly good enough. There's 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 doors open now with with all the social media and all the video and all the stuff that's coming nowadays. You don't have to be at a massive place. So I think try not to get lost in the shuffle. Look at the best fit for you. That that's the best piece we try to give these players because um, especially when they come out of our club is not only am I trying to hopefully get them to come to our school. I also can I help them get to a place that's a good fit. Um, so that's a big piece of, of always look at everything and you know take a visit don't don't turn anybody away don't you know don't turn your nose up at a place because it may be in a town you haven't heard of you know and, and don't turn away the d1 job maybe because it might be some competition to get playing time you know go go with what's the best fit so that's probably the best piece of advice i could give for recruits um for us it's just um you know take a visit to usao email me come visit you know you may not come here, but I, I I think you'll you'll pick up something that may help you down the next next road of life. And if you do come here, I think you'll end up having a, a fantastic career of memories of, you know, some great wins, maybe some some gut wrenching losses. But at the end of the day, I think you 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 know come in here, I think you'll leave a better person if, if that makes sense. So yeah. uh, email us, come to our camps, you know, watch us online. Maybe maybe we pick up one or two USAO Drover fans off 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 this, which is which is which is the goal. Awesome. Well, Coach, I appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck uh, on Senior Night here coming up, and uh, we'll stay in touch and see how you guys progress. Yeah, thank you very much. This, these these things are awesome. We we love these the 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 soccer guys with with with, with podcasts. I think it's just growing the game every day, and I, I know we've got a long way to go, but. Guys like you behind the scenes, I think are, we're, we're pushing it in the right direction. So appreciate you having me. No, thank you, Coach. Talk soon. Yes, sir. Have a good one. You too. Bye. -bye. We are excited to be part of Podcast Row at the 2023 United Soccer Coaches Convention in Philadelphia from January 11th to the 15th. The convention is the ultimate event for soccer coaches, administrators, and fans of the beautiful game. Ignite your passion through captivating presentations, on-field demonstrations, exhibits, and networking events for any coach. Whether you are attending alone or bringing the whole coaching staff, there's no better place for soccer coaches to learn, network, and experience the latest trends in soccer education. Visit www.unitedsoccercoachesconvention.org to register. Come join us as we celebrate our passion for the beautiful game.